So here's the front mounts. And these are the rear two piece. This is a top. This is the bottom here. We're going to put all this in the freezer along with the other side, get them down really, really cold, shrink them up a little bit. So they're a little bit easier to, uh, to put in the car. So as you can see, the car's on the lift. I got chocks under the front wheels. The car's in gear, but the back end's going to be up off the, uh, off the runway. So it's not going to do a whole lot of good. It'll, uh, help me to loosen the lug nuts, but I'm going to loosen everything before I raise it. I also put these stops here just to uh, eliminate the boogeyman in my mind that the car can actually roll off the lift. The first thing I have to do is these muffler hangers. I need to uh, take those off. So this that's attached to the cradle here. So that can all move up and down with the cradle. They can't move with those attached to the body of the car. So I'm gonna take those off. I'm gonna leave these attached because they're gonna move up and down with the cradle. And then I'm gonna loosen these way up so that the exhaust here can flex a little bit inside here. I'll even move these back. Um, because of this tunnel brace here, uh, it's not going to go anywhere. So what I don't want to do is leave this tight and then put all the stress on the header uh, at the head. So we definitely want to uh, loosen these up. Yeah, a little bit better picture of the hanger there in the back at the muffler. We're just going to uh, spray that with a little bit of Windex. The other one back there too. Nice thing about Windex, it's slippery, but uh, it'll dry unlike oil or uh, any other kind of spray that might uh, might be bad for the rubber. Windex isn't bad for the rubber. You're gonna do it on this side too. You got a pry bar. I just can't find mine right now. So it's loose now. All right, I got that off. And it's just sitting on the tunnel brace here. So this is the front cradle bushing. And the back one, you can barely see it right there. Yeah, I'll show it to you later. Anyway, they're both 24 millimeter. So we're gonna loosen those up with the car in the air since it's easier and get the bolts loose. That way we can use an impact and everything we need and leverage under here. So because this is right over the runway, you're either going to have to put a breaker bar on it or use a swivel head like I've got on this extension here. Uh, it just fits. That's loose. I don't want to take it all the way out because I don't want anything uh, dropping down. And that's all it takes, just a little bit. Okay, so I got the wheels off of the ramps onto the uh, three ton jack. <laughs> And it is on my uh, pinch weld block. I think that was my very first video I made on YouTube was that. Uh, maybe number two. Anyway, um, so the car is resting on the jack stands and on the front wheels. And I was not able to do this with an actual jack. What I had to do was just like uh, what the forum member did on Camaro 5 was Get a third jack stand, fully extend it. Well, I, I not quite fully. I think I was up a couple ratchets from fully extended with a nice block of wood. 
running the length of my diff. Now, the ZL1 is a cast iron diff. Uh, the service manual tells you not to jack it up by the diff. Um, I'm not sure if they're just concerned about the aluminum ones. I know people that do it and have no problem. Other people have cracked their diffs. So you're going to have to make that judgment call if you're using a four post. If you're not using a four post like this, you could always jack it up by, uh, well, by one of the cradle mounts until you get it high enough to put the jack stand under there. But this worked. Um, I just lifted it up high enough to put the jack stand under it. Lowered the car until the car was high enough to get those jack stands under their point. Put them in place and then raised the car back up. Um, so it actually came off the diff. So the diff is now hanging as much as it can. Uh, because the bolts are still in. So the bolts are loose. Uh, car is ready to go. I'm going to take the wheels off. And then we'll start working at getting the lower shock disconnected right there. And that should free it from the body of the car. The coil shock assembly is what's keeping the cradle attached to the body of the car, except for the four bolts. Everything else uh, should be able to drop down. Something else to keep in mind is the weight of the car is still on this lift and this lift is not latched into its safety. It's not latched there so the weight of the car is still on the hydraulics. So might even be a good idea. Well you're going to be moving the lift up and down in order to make that jack stand press on the cradle to get it to go up and down. So there's the front bushing. It feels tight because I tightened it with the wrench a little bit. Um, so what we're going to do, gonna lower the lift until that center jack stand pushes up on the rear end. We want pressure on this so we can loosen these out and then put them back in some threads um, except for the one we're going to work on which is probably going to be this one first there. just saw it push up on it just a little bit that's all we want we don't want to lift it off these jack stands we just want to put pressure on it yeah, I've got the front bolt really out. I mean, it's got a lot of travel that this thing's going to drop. Um, I made it pretty loose, and then I just spun it in a little bit, uh, three or four turns. And then the back one, I loosened it up. You can see the, looks like a steel sleeve in there or something. Uh, there's a gap. It's probably, it's a good half inch. So now what we're going to do we're going to raise the lift and that's going to lift the body, hopefully lift the body off of uh, the front and this front should lower. That's the theory anyway. Let's see how it goes. Okay, well, that's off the diff. And it definitely dropped. And that bolt is pretty tight. And I'm gonna take this bolt out, since I'm gonna do one at a time. So this is the only one with the bolt that's removed. Everything else is loose. You know, thinking about it, I'm gonna have to make sure that uh, this piece drops down more anyway because I'm not gonna be able to get the new one in this gap. 
I mean, that's as far down as that goes before it starts, uh, before it just stops moving because the, uh, the cradle is still attached to the body of the car uh, through the spring strut assembly. So I'm going to go ahead and put the bolt back in for a minute and take the bolt out from the lower control arm of the strut so I can get more travel on this. All right, 21 millimeter nut and bolt. Uh, it's a happy medium between raising and lowering the, the lift to be able to get that thing to move out, but it did. I'm sure there's going to be a happy medium putting it back in too. So, But that will allow the carriage to drop away from the coil that is still attached to the body. So we should get a little more drop in the front now. I'm going to go do the other side first. Alright, so all the bolts all the way around are basically, I, I took them out one at a time and then screwed them in about uh, eight turns of those. And I still needed the screwdriver to just kind of pry down on this to be able to get this socket in here. Uh, so I'm going to uh, try to press this out a little bit, see how it goes. And if it doesn't move, I'm going to put a little bit of heat on here. This should start moving. I'll show you guys in detail on the other side how I got that out. Um, pretty much, I heat it up around here, just like you see in the other videos. Uh, just until you start to see smoke. If you see smoke, you're, you're, you're hot enough. This uh, bend here has been there since I bought the car. I don't know if it came like that from GM or... Um, I don't think who I bought it from uh, hit anything, but the first owner may have. I'm the third owner on the car, so it's possible something snagged it. Maybe uh, when the car was on the lift at the dealer. I'm not quite sure. Uh, but this thing isn't too hot. I didn't get it super hot. But look at this. It's like rubber and plastic. That green stuff is plastic. I wonder if that's just a ZL1 thing. Interesting. Came out pretty easy. And the hole in there looks pretty clean. So we're going to check it out, wire brush the inside of it, see if our solid mounts will fit. And I'm just using my mirror here to look around the edge. I don't see any uh, plastic stuck to it anymore. Looks really good. It's nice and cleaned up. Something that helped me, I just used a, a wire brush like this one. But I uh, put a little more heat to this just to get the plastic to soften up and this thing just grabbed it and pulled it right out. There was only a little bit hanging around. It didn't even take much heat. I mean, you can see I'm touching it. Um, so yeah, if, if my bushings were cold enough, I could put them in and actually I probably could put them in and just, they're, they're going to be kind of a little bit of a tight fit. So, that's that's a good thing. You don't want them moving around, you know, this way. You only want to do one of these at a time um, because you, you really want the three bolts in. It just helps to stabilize the, the rear end and not get it to move around so much. Be careful about the gas tank. So on this side, you can see the wires right there. Be careful your flame doesn't hit that. And then right behind that is the fuel tank. So make sure you don't have any fuel leaks or anything. You're going to be putting an open flame to this thing. Uh, if, you, uh, if you can't just press them out. I couldn't. Um, I had to put heat on it right away. Probably because they were plastic. But uh, yeah, when it went, it went quick. Alright, just cleaned it up with some 220 and degreased it just put a little bit of paint on it because it was some bare metal right there now i'm going to uh, take some anti-seize and put it on the inside here the anti-seize will help it to uh, slide in there and let the paint dry first so if you've ever had the joy of working with anti-seize you know the stuff gets everywhere 
So I'm going to put it on pretty liberally, but I'm definitely going to be wiping it off. I don't want this stuff um, getting all over the underside of the car. Just using a chopstick because I had it available. You can use whatever you want. All right, I got a good coat of it in there. Got my fingers in there and smoothed it around and then I wiped it off with the paper towel so it wasn't so thick. It's a real thin coat of it. Should be just enough. Well, that went right in. Uh, I used the dead blow and before I put the bolt in and tapped the bottom in just so it had less work to do. It went in nice and flat. The top just slid in and uh, it was rocking there a little bit. I ran the bolt up a little bit and then I put the car down on it and it just pushed it right in. So I just want to make sure that it's sitting flat all the way around and it is. Um, I'll show you on the other one so you'll see me actually do it in the video. Um, so I'm just going to keep that about eight turns and then go over to the other side and do the other front and show you some of the stuff I didn't show you on this one. All right, we're here on the other side. And uh, I'm just gonna go ahead and take out the bolt. I've already got uh, the car being pushed up by the lift. So the rear end is dropped out. And you can see there's not a very big gap there. So I'm gonna have to get a screwdriver on it to open it up. Or a pry bar. I don't know what I did with mine. I just got a socket. This is, oh, probably an inch and an eighth tall. See how I can move that. Now the whole suspension is moving. I center it as best I can. That's good enough. Now I'm going to uh, put the weight of the body on it. So I don't want to get too crazy with it because when this thing goes, I got to make sure the body is still on the jack stand over here in front of the wheel because uh, if it's not, the car will come crashing down on it when this thing uh, starts getting pushed through. Once again, be aware of any fuel, be aware of your gas tank. Don't even need that much flame. It's gonna do it till it starts to smoke. Might even see it begin to move on its own. This one might be different. I don't know. You guys are just kind of hanging on the uh, trailing arm. <laughs> so. Ok, 
okay so the stuff's oozing out the bottom you can see it over here probably sticking in the back so we're going to concentrate some heat in the back the new bushing on the other side is up against the body so this one's got some weight on it I don't think I got enough in the back over here you can see all that plastic oozing out the top It's loose. It's just stuck in there. There she is. And that thing's hot, so don't touch it. Definitely don't want something shifting. I don't want something shifting in here when I'm cleaning. So make sure you have the uh, the proper weight on the car to make this separate. Because the other side was up against the body. This could have very easily shifted and put up against the body when I was cleaning out the uh, the plastic. So make sure you. Uh, Make sure you know what's going on with your with your car so you don't get hurt. Having two people would be a good idea. Look at that big old piece there. Whew. Look at that. It's all plastic. So this thing is hot. So I'm not getting too close to it with my hands. I can feel there's a glue along the bottom there. Let's get the big chunks out. I must admit it is a little bit easier on the lift it's a little out more off the ground I'm not having to sit on the ground it's got a little wire wheel just happened to be what I have it's not the best one for the job but Having insulated gloves definitely helps. There is no more glue in this thing or plastic or whatever that stuff was. So this is ready to uh, wipe down. I'm gonna sand the outside here just like I did on the other side and paint it. Do the same thing with the anti-seize and then I'll show you how I press it. That's a 220. 
just getting off the scale from the heat. That's all I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to take it down to bare metal. Just getting off the scale. This is just rubbing alcohol. Just wanting a degree. So you can see it's still a little bit warm. It's not warm enough to light this stuff on fire. It's only 70% anyway, but it probably would light. But just cleaning it up. It's not hot. I can touch it with nitro gloves, so it can't be that hot. Okay. Now we're going to uh, cover some plastic bag around here so I don't get all my red turning into black. And we're going to paint it. And I'm just using this engine enamel. It's high temp. It's just kind of a flat black is why I chose it. Not because it's any special paint. Keep that from getting all over the place. Not going for perfection here. Just kind of making it look halfway decent if you happen to be in here and see it. Instead of all rusty, which is what it would do if you didn't do anything, it would probably be kind of a rusty color. We're going to let that dry a little bit. Then we'll do the anti-seize trick. I think i take that chopstick and just dip it in that silver goo. Yeah, I could have just used my fingers, but so I want to kind of get it around this bottom edge a little bit. Make sure I get it all the way around. I'm just going to take a paper towel and clean up all the slobber. I don't need it dripping out and getting all over everything. There's not a ton of it. It's just enough to make a super light coat. I'm going to change my gloves so I don't get it everywhere. And put bushings in. Woo, wow, these things are cold. Ow, it's actually hurting my hands. Oh man, those things are cold. Okay. It's knocking all the garbage out from the frame. You can see how that one just, wow, that one just fell right in. That one was way easier than the other one. You run the bolt up. And I got a few turns in there. So now I'm just gonna move the car to bring this up a little bit. And we'll start working on the back ones. Before I do that, I can feel a little bit of slop in there. I'm wondering if that's going to go away when the uh, when the bushing uh, when the mount warms up. We'll see. The bottom one's definitely staying in, but they're flush, top and bottom. That's what we want. All right. Well, I was just going to show you guys all on the other side because I have more room. This side's very cramped with all my pipes here and everything, but I ran into a problem, so I want to show you. So I got the rear one out, but as you can see, the sway bar is in the way. So I'm going to I'm going to leave the sway bar connected at the wheel. I'm just going to uh, take it off of the bushings up there, just pull them away, and uh, I guess see what happens. So you can see that's a pin, a guide pin. So yeah, this one won't come out anymore. And as you can see on the top there, um, it's metal and it is metal all the way through. I thought, well, maybe I could just cut it in half and pull that piece out and drive the other one all the way through, but it's not two pieces. It's just like the front. So 
gonna have to uh, take the sway bar brackets off and let the sway bar drop down enough where I can get this piece out. Shouldn't be a problem. Well, what I thought was gonna be easy turned out to be not so easy as usual. So I had to take out the link for the sway bar, which is here. So I took those out and I thought, well, I could just rotate this out of the way. Well, not so easy. It doesn't, it doesn't spin in the bushing. So I just had to take out the four bolts right there, two 15 millimeters. I just had to undo it. It's just laying across the, uh, the exhaust now. So it'll be easy to put back in. I just didn't, didn't think that I would have to take it apart that far. I thought I could just spin it in those bushings, but nope, it won't spin. So if you see that uh, poly line right there, be careful with it. It looks like I, I didn't see it. And it started melting a little bit, but this thing's already out, so I'm not going to do anything with it. That line's for the NPP exhaust, um, so you're only going to find that on the ZL1. So maybe disconnect that before you start heating it up. Getting around the back side of this with the torch, getting this hot. I didn't hit it with the flame, but just being close to this, uh, could put a hole in it. Then uh, this muffler over here, when it uh, close or open, you'd have to uh, fix it with some heat shrink or a new line or something. So, just be aware. Okay, so I got the back end. You can see the top pushed right in. The bottom still needs pressed and the pin still needs to come down. Got this side done, wasn't too bad. I mean, it was just it's just like the front, basically. It just took more heat. So just be sure you don't take out more than one bolt at a time. Always leave three bolts. Otherwise, um, that alignment pin will get out of alignment, and then you'll be uh, having a hard time. I got this one out. It's a mess. So got to clean that up. And uh, yeah, that strut came off its seat, too. So, just because I was moving it around, I shouldn't have been moving it. I didn't realize uh, they are lower in spring, so they're a little bit uh, shorter than the normal ones, so they don't have as much seat pressure when they're fully extended. Not a big deal. Done them before. Just got to take the four bolts out up there and uh, the one bolt down there, which is already out. And uh, yeah, I'm going to buy new new rubber for them. The thing about these are they're magnetic rides, so I have to depin. Maybe that's the front. I think the front I have to depin. The back ones I don't. So these should be pretty easy to fix. Get some new uh, seat material there. So another quick thing on putting uh, anises in here. Make sure it's cool enough that you can touch it. Otherwise the anises is going to liquefy and just run all over the place. It's another reason why I wipe most of it out with a with a paper towel. You can see I'm going to raise it. That's as far as it wants to go. And I need it to go higher than that. I'm not sure what it's catching on. That's still not high enough to get that top mount in. So you can see how much I need to lower it by. That's a lot. I took this bolt out here so this side can drop more. And it worked. You see 
see how it's off now. But that's all right, it's not off too much. There we go. Now let's put this bolt back in before it gets out of alignment. Okay. There we go. Get that in there a little bit. All right. understand folks I've never done this before this is my first so I'm learning and hopefully you don't make the mistakes I am but that's why I make videos so I can make the mistakes and you won't have to So I tightened that to seat it, and it's seated all the way around. I can feel it feels good. So I backed that bolt off a little bit, and now I'm going to run all these bolts up, all four corners, until they touch. And then I can go ahead and uh, buzz them a little bit before I torque them. All right, so I brought the weight of the car down on the bushings. They were all just hand tight. I tightened up the two back ones first. And I tightened up the front ones. I was able to get the uh, the coil to reseat. All I had to do is grab the spring and spin it. And I know spinning one direction wasn't working out so great. I spun it the other way and it popped right back in and it went up against the stop. So now all I'm going to do is raise the car and put the bolt in the bottom for the strut so I can get that back together and get all this stuff torqued tomorrow. But right now, I really want to get those struts back in there. So I put a jack underneath the lower control arm in order to jack up the, uh, the assembly here in order to get the sway bar link to connect. I've already put the uh, sway bar bushings. Everything's loose. I haven't torqued anything. I'll go through and give you guys torque specs here on everything once I get it uh, buttoned up. So I know sooner or later somebody's going to ask me if I put blue Loctite on any of these bolts. I'm putting it on the lower uh, shock bolt uh, because these are a torque and turn bolt and I don't have a replacement yet. Uh, the nut is a top lock. I've explained those before. Um, so because it's a top lock and I've taken it off before, I'm going to put blue Loctite on it. Uh, just keep it from backing out. And uh, I'm going to get new bolts for, uh, for this and new nuts. And then torque and turn them according to the torques I'm going to give you uh, in a little bit here. So I'm going to take some brake cleaner. I'm going to spray it on a rag and wipe this off. The backside has a dust cover, so I'm not worried about it. But I want to make sure I didn't get any anti-seas on this. This hasn't rotated because the park brake's on. But I want to make sure, I mean you can see my fingerprint so I'm sure there's grease. I'm just going to wipe it down. I'm not going to spray directly on the rotor because I don't want to wash any of the junk into the pad. So I'm just going to use a paper towel and spray it on there and wipe it off. Alright, got the wheels on. Uh, got them torqued. To about 80 for now. I lowered the whole lift and the center jack stand picked up the car so I could remove the uh, the jack stands. Now I'm just going to raise the car. That was weird. That was really weird watching that compress that suspension. Okay, so your sway bar bushing torque is 43 foot-pounds, 58 newton meters. Sway bar shaft link is 19 foot-pounds, 26 newton meters. Now the shock bolt, the lower shock bolt, 
that's the kind of weird one. So that's a torque and turn, 58 foot-pounds, 120 degrees. That's this one here. Um, right now I have blue Loctite and I've got it torqued to 120. And I may do a little more. You know, if this thing comes loose, what's going to happen is it's going to rattle around in there and the shock's going to rattle around. Doubt very much if the nut's going to spin off because it's, it's a crimp top, but I mean, I suppose it's possible. Okay, rear subframe bolts. That's for all four of these. Now I'm going to go look on uh, Hendrick's website because I thought Hendrick said these were 100 foot-pounds. That's a big difference between 100 foot-pounds and 166 plus a turn. So that's kind of sketchy to me. I got to do some research and I'm going to let you guys know. I got my exhaust back. Got that tight. Now I tighten these to 50 foot-pounds. It's a little more than probably what they're rated. Um, I think 45 is in the book. All right, well, according to AFE, uh, which makes um, aluminum solid mount bushings, that torques to 100 foot-pounds. Uh, Fast Tech put these in. They just put them in with an impact gun, so um, they didn't specify a torque. I'm going to go ahead and pull these out, put blue lock tight, tighten them down to 100 foot-pounds, and then uh, mark them with white paint to make sure uh, if I see them spinning out or not. So the reason I'm going to go with the 100 foot-pounds instead of the 166 plus um, 45 degrees is these are aluminum. The factory ones have a steel insert. I don't want to break these or bend them. So 100 foot-pounds is all I'm going to do. A little blue Loctite and we'll call it good. Well, hey, I was inside editing this video that you just got done watching, and I realized there might be a couple things you guys uh, should probably know. Um, so it's been probably three months since I put the solid mount bushings in, and since then I've put in um, the Hotchkiss Chassis Max, actually came after that, and then the, um, I have a carbon fiber drive shaft in the car and that video should be coming out if it's not already out. One thing about the carbon fiber drive shaft is the pinion angle and the center line of the transmission output shaft have to be parallel. And I put an angle meter on the yokes of the diff and the transmission to measure that to make sure that they were parallel. I wasn't sure if they were still going to be in parallel after replacing the cradle mounts. If, if the front mount or the back mount was different, it would change the trajectory of that center line on the rear end. So the spec for the car, uh, according to the service manual, um, is 0.25 to 1 degree. That's how much they can be out of parallel from each other. So using an angle meter, um, the car was uh, 0.5 of a degree uh, in spec and the error on that digital meter was 0.3. So I'm under one. Um, it's actually 0.8 if the error was on the high side. So even with the solid mount bushings, the center line on the pinion angle and the transmission center line output shaft is parallel and in spec. So if you guys are worried about that, don't it should be fine but so that's one of the things I wanted to mention uh, to you guys about the other was the hundred foot-pound torque um, it's been three months I've checked it bolts haven't moved and I was worried about that because the upper and lower mount has got a gap and if you tighten that too much um, you can actually bend or break that aluminum since it's going to try to compress that gap um, the spec that I got from, I believe it was AFE, they're a solid aluminum mount, very similar to this. In fact, they, they look almost identical. So that's why I went with their spec. I did call uh, Hendrix Engineering and um, he didn't have a spec for me. He didn't have a torque spec, which I thought was weird. He thought 100 sounded good. So 
Um, no problems there, so I want to let you guys know that as well. Oh,